Hello, and welcome back to another video with us discussing, you know, different problems we can solve uh, using SQL um, and just different basically insights we can provide and what you can kind of do with them afterwards. So in this example, we're going to talk about joining consecutive events. And what do I mean when I say this? I mean, let's say you have a customer coming in. In this case, we're going to talk about, talk about Great Clips just because this is kind of a, um, you know, Great Clips, which is provides hair clips, is hair cuts, is one of those companies that, you know, you kind of show up on a periodic basis. Um, another good example of this would kind of be like Jiffy Lube, where you know, you're know you constantly showing up every three to six months to get your oil changed. Um, same thing with kind of great clips, right? Like some people have various kind of schedules on how often they show up. And, and the thing here is, and the reason this is kind of important, and I kind of discussed this below, is you know let's say you've got a lot of customers like me who either are a little cheap or, or don't have the time or don't like to spend a lot of time you know, getting their haircuts. And you kind of can target this group, right? Like maybe you've got the high frequency haircutters. Well, it's hard to increase the amount of times that they come and show up to, uh, to your company, right? Because if they show up every once a month, you're probably not going to get them for an extra haircut a month. But if you target your customers that, for instance, show up maybe twice a year, there's a probability that you could possibly, you know, target these people and maybe increase it to three times a year or two and a half times a year or whatever it might be, uh, depending on how, what campaign you run, you could kind of possibly try to force them to show up that one extra time a year, which, uh, you know, I kind of talked about this below, right? Like, why was that important? Well, let's say, you know, you've got 500,000 people who, who fit that category, right? Like you, you kind of target them, you, you calculate, okay, which one, which people only show up X so often, right? And now how do we increase them? And why is this valuable? Well, let's say, you know, you increase um, with this with this campaign by about 0.5 a year, you know, 0.5 extra trips a year um, in this group of 500,000 people. Well, what does that kind of come down to? Well, a haircut's usually about $15. Um, 0.5 a year basically means 250,000 extra haircuts a year, which is $3.75 million, which honestly is a pretty big deal. You know, if, if you're able to run a campaign for, let's say, 750K and increase your profits by 3 million, or you know, on top of that, have an extra three million that you basically make back. Uh, I think that that can kind of be considered worth it. It's a small, small win, and this is just a basic example. You know, the number might be bigger. I don't know. You know, that the the customer basis of of great clips, um, and and this kind of also um, impacts companies again, like Jiffy Lube. If you know that there are just certain customers who are really bad at showing up when they should, right? Because I again, like I'm really bad. Like the yellow light for my oil change will probably be on probably about for two months before I actually finally go in. And if they were to get me to go in even sooner, they would get that extra, you know, 0.5 or, or 0.25 extra oil changes a year, which would dramatically, you know, increase their bottom line. And so being able to kind of track how you do, how you're doing, like after you run this campaign, well, first, you know, targeting those people and then tracking those people, that, that specific group, to see if you increase the amount of times they show up is kind of a very important uh, Point. And it's both of those, right? First, you have to figure out who those people are, and then you have to figure out how you're doing over time. Uh, so this is, this is kind of the two sides of, of most um, of, of the world, right? Like you've got the data side of the world where we, where we provide insights, you know, people like me like to provide insights, and then you have to have the, the creative side, the campaigning side, actually create things and figure out how do we influence these people to do what, do what we want. And again, it, it's actually beneficial typically for the people like, I should probably get a haircut more often because I'll look better and I won't look ragged all the time. And I should also change my oil more often because again, my car would probably appreciate it. Um, being able to do things like that, these, these small changes can dramatically increase companies' um, profits. And again, there, there are groups of people they, they can target. And this is the thing, it's like they have to figure out who to target first because then they're gonna save money on marketing and they've got a much better chance of actually converting. So it's, it's kind of this two-way street. So let's talk about how would we do this. And, and so the key is we need to figure out, well, how often do people show up? And this means, you know, in a SQL database, you're gonna have to look at um, events side by side. So you have to look at basically event one. So if we were to look at this, you got event one was at some time minus event two at another time, right? So you've got these two events, and you gotta figure out, okay, well, what's the difference? But that's not typically how SQL is set up. You can't just say, well, I wanna take event one for this, this specific customer and event two for this specific customer, right? Um, databases aren't set up that way. It's usually set up in such a way where it's event one, event two for customer, you know, customer one and customer two, or customer one and customer one, right? So you can't just say, you know, well, take these two events. Well, there's, there's hundreds of other events for this customer and there's other customers. So how do you kind of break this up so you can kind of tell, you know, well, what's the difference between these two uh, 
two events for this one customer. And that's where uh, we're gonna start our actual SQL part today. So let's talk about, you know, okay, so again, we're doing haircuts. So I've got this table, it's called F haircuts. So it's a fact table, quote unquote, you know, it's just kind of a really simple table with a customer ID, um, the date of the visit, really. I didn't even put like paid amount to like do any extra calculations. It's just customer ID, um, date of visits. Uh, it's also got some other basic stuff in there, like a date stamp, but other than that, that's all it is. And here's the kicker. Again, we've, we've talked about analytic um, functions before. Uh, if you saw my rolling sum video, we used the sum version, but now we're going to use the the uh, row number function. Uh, I just missed that. So we're going to use the row number function. So what this is going to do is basically add a row number broken down by customer ID and ordered by date of date of visit. So what does that mean? It basically means um, so if we look at this kind of example above, where we've got event one, event two for customer ID. You know, assuming event one and event two are you know in order, you then you're you're going to get a row number where it's going to say this is one and this is two, and then if we added a new kind of um, customer in here, now it's going to give a new row number starting at one because this is partitioned by customer. So this is kind of what you're going to get. You're going to start getting this broken down a little bit, and I'll show you kind of what it looks like because I think it's always important to look at your data. Um, and then this top portion here. Um, this is basically going to check if this temp table, which is, you know, in SQL Server, you can do this. You can just basically say into uh, some sort of, ha you know, hashtag pound symbol, uh, some sort of just basically temp table. A single uh, hashtag is just a basically local temp table. And I'm not, I'm not going to get too much into the nuances of local versus global temp tables here. But basically, this uh, if statement just checks if it exists. If it does, it drops it so I can recreate it. Um, without uh, bumping into it. If it already exists, it won't be able to create it and it'll give me an error. So this will just allow me to create it. Um, so let's see what this looks like. Let's select all from this hashtag haircuts uh, from. So if we select this now, select from here. So what you'll see, right, um, is basically these events broken down. So this is the customer ID, you know, um, this is the date that they got, they got a haircut on, um, and then it's ordered, right? So you'll see it's all broken down by customer and each of them start with one uh, based on the order of the dates. And so what, why this is important is now we wanna say basically, you know, I wanna join this row number event to this row number event, one and two, I wanna join these two. And, and if you're not kind of getting how you would do that, um, I'll show you below, but basically you just have to add one, right, to this row number behind it. So you can basically say plus one here, um, and that'll equal to this two, and then now we have these two events joined. So I'll show you below kind of what that looks like. So okay, we have this temp table, and we go below, and here is where we're gonna join, self-join basically, right? We're gonna self-join right here. We're joining uh, haircuts to haircuts on the same customer ID, of course. And then here's where we kind of can look at consecutive events. So here you'll see this plus one on one of the, on the first T1 table. And what this is basically gonna do is say, okay, well, you know, plus one onto one and now join that to whatever that equals. So plus one is two, so it joins to two. And then we can use date diff to basically figure out the date difference between the T1 table and the T2 table. And so, yeah, so you're basically can comparing this 2018-0101 to 2018-0511 and figuring out the dates between that, or dates. So if we run this, just to show you what this looks like, it'll give you, okay, so let's, okay, so for customer one, row number one, for their first visit, between their first visit and their second visit, you can see that, oh wow, there's 130 days, and, and this is where you can kind of start tracking patterns and seeing, okay, well, who can we target? And, you know, you'd probably target um, the, the heaviest percentile, right? Like, so let's say, you know, looking at this, you're probably gonna target the top 5% of people who have, you know, the highest number of, of gaps in between. Um, Cause there's a lot of reason that there might be for this, right? Like they might be going to a separate, um, to a different haircut person. Like that, that might be a thing is they might just not be loyal. And then how do you make them a loyal customer? That's, that's one, you know, possible case. Uh, another thing is they just might not get a haircut that often. Um, or, you know, there, there, there's a lot of reasons why they might, may or may not. And so targeting that kind of top 5% or something like that, you know, you, you kind of have to pick it based on your strategy. Again, this is where more 
um, the business side comes in and kind of helps guide along, you know, the data side and the business side are going to work together to kind of figure out what makes the most sense. And, and this is just kind of the start. We can kind of keep going through this and developing kind of some metrics to kind of track this because, you know, that, that, that's kind of the second half of this, right? Like your first half is, okay, you create your target, you create the people you want to, you want to focus on. And then the second half is then you want to glean the results. Like if you're targeting the specific group of people, you should see at the end of the day, things change. If things don't change, then you probably need to go in and change your campaign or figure out why are things changing. And, and that's how, that's really how data insights works, right? Like it's, it's, it's a two sided field. Like you create, what I would consider typically a target, um, you find this, this difference or something that you want to change, you figure out a way to track it, which this is, you know, if you know you've got a certain population of people, that's the way you track it. You track those people and you see if after you send them all some sort of newsletter campaign, whatever it might be, again, whatever works these days, um, I'm not as big on the marketing side, so I don't pretend to know what works best for what people, um, but whatever works best, whatever you can kind of work out with them, and then you want to then go through time, you know, maybe six months later, come back and say like, okay, so we targeted these people with X, Y, Z. Did it work? Did we spend our money effectively? And, and that's where the second half comes in. And if you can prove that it works, then you can prove that you've basically made your company money. Thank you so much. Uh, we're going to kind of continue maybe trying to develop this into metrics at some point, but this is just an example that I want to get started with, mostly focusing on consecutive events. Um, we might go more into metric development and tracking uh, later, it kind of just depends on uh, how time goes. And if you have any specific questions that you want answered, please feel free to send them to me. And, uh, you know, I'll work on them. I like working on fun new problems. Um, and so if you have any questions, just let me know. Thank you.